Baker Mayfield's rookie year is in the toilet, hmm. and it is this move to me provokes more chaos. I, I can't defend Hughes' record, hmm. but I also I can't defend this decision to fire him midway through Baker Mayfield's rookie year. I just don't think this was the right thing to do right now. Uh, I think it was. Um, I think there was something that they should have done and been preemptive about it, even in the offseason. Even though it was John Dorsey's first year, um, you could just see that relationship didn't hit the, the ground running in terms of mutual respect. Uh, if you're John Dorsey, you're like, why do I have a coach who has not won a road game ever as a whole co a head coach of my organization? And why would I want this alleged quarterback whisper or respected quarterback whisper to now touch my new prospect that I drafted at the number one overall position, Baker Mayfield. So I, I think that John Dorsey fought his instincts, which were not to be the new sheriff in town and say there's a new rule, new way, and everything has to go. But you should trust yourself in those moments because that intuition proves now to be the smartest way he should have proceeded. Hugh Jackson, say what you want about him. There was a tug of war going on between him and Todd Haley over their new prospect. John Dorsey didn't want neither one to really damage him. And I don't think Baker Mayfield's damaged goods, but like anyone who has a child or someone you're trying to mold, uh, when you see there's wrong being committed, it's, it's time to just change that and move on and move forward. I, I don't like the firing. I don't. I, to your point, I think that if you had to fire them, yes, do it before the season starts. But right now, I thought, I thought that this Cleveland Browns team was playing for their head coach, Hugh Jackson, and performing well. Were they equating to wins? No, but you have to learn how to win. You talk about a team that is pulling together and trying to scrap every single quarter to, to find a way to win for overtime game, that lets me know that we're not giving up on our coach. We, we're in agreement with what he's trying to get done. We just don't know how to win. We haven't won in two years, three years. Well, the last <laughs> decade. <laughs> 20 I mean, Keep exactly. going. 30 years. So Keep I, going. I, don't, I don't like it because uh, as a young quarterback coming into this league, the number one thing that I think is necessary is stability. And when you don't create stability in an already unstable situation, you're going to you're going to question now Baker Mayfield and his progress moving forward. Yeah, and I agree with you that that's not going to help the quarterback. I think that's a big reason why all those quarterbacks that go there they they never turn out to be doing anything really great because right. they, you can't have coordinator after coordinator and head coach after head coach. Just look at the history of the great quarterbacks around the league. They've always had stability at that position, but. I will, when I first came to the league, I had Marty Schottenheimer. Yep. Yeah. There, okay. And it seems like the last good coach that Cleveland had was Marty Schottenheimer. It was the last time they had success. But he used to say, this is a performance-driven business. If you don't perform, then you're out of here. Right. And it looks like Dorsey is, is saying that. He's trying to set the tone as he's gotten there. I don't think he ever really liked Todd Haley. Didn't he fire him before when he got to the Chiefs mm -hmm. and, uh, and brought in Andy Reid? <laughs> so I just think he's saying, let's do the clean slate. Let's let the chips fall where they may be. Let's go out and maybe, you know, if we got to tank another season, we'll get some more draft picks, and we're going to build this team going I, forward. I want to be clear, though. Todd Haley was brought there by – this is his first yeah. year. Yeah. And so – and I don't think that was a Hugh Jackson decision. They wanted someone to run the offense uh, be, beyond Hugh Jackson. And so I, I just go back to what does Baker Mayfield think right now? Yeah. Halfway through his season – he is changing course already and changing course temporarily because Greg Williams will not be the long-term head coach of this team. Whoever this Kitchens, Hitchens, whoever will, the offensive coordinator likely won't be there next season. And so I, I don't get why you would put all this upheaval right in the middle of the guy's rookie season. Confidence is a very fragile thing in that league. And if somehow in any way Baker maybe, and I know he's a very confident guy, but you get dealt enough adversity and enough setbacks in the NFL, it will rattle your confidence. I just think they could have done this at the end. of The time to do it was before the season or at the end of the season, not in the middle of it. No, you're starting to see, uh, look, we have a, a short sample size. You're starting to see the erosion, the, the decay of what Baker Mayfield was in spirit and how he hit the field running when he got his opportunity early in the season. Think about it. The guy's regressed. Now, why is he regressing? In part, he's being coached in a way that we don't want him to continue to proceed because once we get a new regime in here, he's going to have to unlearn some of that stuff. Baker Mayfield almost looks like a guy who said, 
I don't need all this. Because when I got here day one, when my opportunity was presented, I was better than what you saw yesterday. When you're starting to see Baker Mayfield not play with the same pizzazz, same spirit, and let's be real, on script as advertised. And I think that's happening because of that tug of war with Haley and, and the, you. Then I say make a real decision. Uh-huh. Because, because the decision they didn't see, there was a fight between Haley and Hugh Jackson. Right. And we're going to kick them both out. We ain't going to make a decision. And to me, they should have made a decision. Stick with Haley or stick with Hugh Jackson. They had that option. Instead, they kicked them both out. And to me, th- that was a, a decision made in fear, in my, in uh, my opinion. I 100% agree with that. You don't get rid of both of them. Make a decision. He has a rapport with both of them. But obviously, you know who you would prefer, you being John Dorsey. So just go with that. But that could be the lesser of two evils. I don't prefer either one. Just but you're right. But for the rest of the year, you you don't prefer yeah. Greg Williams. We got games to win, y'all. We, we, exactly. We, we, exactly. And you're going to win them with Greg Williams? Right. We keep no, going into Kansas City? No, but look, we already know the relationship Dorsey and Haley. And then we know that Hugh Jackson's record is enough to say we don't have a relationship. Because you've won three games, y'all, in three years. What are we talking about here? I don't I, see you it. Got, I, I say you got nothing to lose. You got nothing, <laughs> nothing to, lose. to lose. I'm going to fire them both. I'm, <laughs> now, I see why, but I understand what John Dorsey's doing, and I don't know. I have kids. They fight. But I always tell them, look, the next one to talk, both of y'all are getting in trouble. Mm-hmm. Okay? And that's how it is. And I think that's how we handle <laughs> that, this situation. Yeah, that, you're exactly. You guys don't want to get along? Both you guys go to timeout. Mm. They're both in timeout now. You being nice, you saying timeout on. Hey, look at this. <laughs> hey, no hey, this is, hey, we're in a new time, <laughs> new era. This is this out. is the sports fan in me asking this question because, so, and I, I don't know if you guys as athletes ever buy into it, but can a franchise be cursed? Can can, can we? What we're looking at Cleveland year after year, ever since Art Modell took the team out of Baltimore, it has been nothing but misery for the Cleveland Browns. I, how many different head coaches? No quarterback survives there. Nothing good happens for the Cleveland Browns. They, to me, are the new Chicago Cubs. Mm. You know, and the, the Cubs for I don't know, damn near 100 years were the lovable losing Cubs. Is that what we're looking at in Cleveland? Do you guys as athletes ever think that a franchise can be cursed? Hell no. Uh, it's crazy that people even... That this is still an evergreen storyline. Like, like, listen... I know it's Halloween time. I can see by all your, <laughs> all your ex-girlfriends up here. I can see all of them up here. But, but dog, stop running with this Halloween theme of curse and demons and goo- the goblins. Man, look, you get on the team. You don't believe in luck? Or here's a definition. Here's a definition of curse. Oh. Bad players, bad coaching, bad management, and just a bad situation. That's curse. But that can change like this. Here's a couple teams that were cursed, franchises that were cursed. Remember the Warriors, uh, 94 to 06, and only went to the playoffs once? How the Warriors doing right now? How's that curse looking right now? Ah, your mouth's open. Okay, so let's <laughs> talk about the Red Sox. Uh, four championships, we just saw them win another one. And but it went 04. on forever, and they believed in curses in Boston. And uh, so if you believe in them, break it. Uh, to me, there's no curse. New England, we know early 90s, New England was sorry as hell. No one on this panel has lost more football games than me. I don't even need to see y'all record. I know. <laughs> I've been through it. It wasn't being cursed, man. I've been on teams. We end up 5-11. and 11. We started the season 4-0. and 0. Like, it's just crazy how things happen, but it's not the walls. It, it's not the spirits. It's just, hey, we're not executing. Simple as that. Yeah, I'm, the curse thing is no. There is no <laughs> such thing as – because what you may experience as a curse, I come in 10 years later – I didn't experience that. Same. I feel like I can change this whole I- identity of the team. Yeah. So let's get it done. But to your point, it starts with management, coaches, and then players. If that isn't in agreement and in alignment and going in the right direction all together in unison and in harmony, yeah, you're going to feel like you're cursed, but you're just a bad organization. <laughs> it's just bad. I believe in the curse. Oh, <laughs> believe in the curse. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, and if there is one going on with Cleveland, there's, just like with Boston – then the big comeback is coming. That means Cleveland's going to be pretty good here in a couple uh, of years, right? Wouldn't that mean something? I mean, all right. but oh, I believe and, in that. Maybe you, don't in karma? you don't believe in karma? If I'm good to you, things will good things will come to you? Uh, well, that's a different discussion. Yeah, no, I, I don't karma. believe in that this either. You don't believe in, no, I don't believe in no karma. karma. That's Art two Modell, acts. Art Modell <laughs> made one of the worst decisions in sports, in my opinion. A rabid Cleveland fan base took that team out of there to Baltimore, and you think there's no... 
hell to pay for that. Oh, listen, look, uh, Stan Kroenke made one of the worst decisions ever took that franchise out of St. Louis. They look fine to me undefeated yeah. right now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, but they were, they were sorry for a while, though. Oh, yeah. They we, were sorry for a while. It's always temporary. Every man. team yeah. goes through a slump. I mean, before Brett Favre took over with the Green it's Bay Packers. It's been 30 years for the Cleveland, <laughs> Cleveland Browns. <laughs> I understand all of that. And their time will come. That yeah. doesn't mean they're breaking the curse. They're just getting better. Yeah. And check the record. Our Modell won in Baltimore. Yeah. In Baltimore. Okay. In Baltimore. Oh, oh so the spirit. I thought the is... curse is in Cleveland. Oh, the curse is stuck in the locale. Oh. <laughs> the curse can't go different places, yeah. huh? The yeah. curse got to stay Where still. Where was Bill Belichick before he got to New England? Thank Cleveland. You. Cleveland. And He's, he was losing. And they did him wrong, though. They did Look him wrong. Look at him now. Karma came back, and he got it. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> I'm telling you, there's karma just, there. Bill know. Belichick... Everywhere he's been as an assistant or a head coach, he's won everywhere except one place, Cleveland. His first head coaching job, which he said he has learned from tremendously. Yes. And his first they year did in New him England. wrong there. They, they did, did him wrong. wrong there, and he but he even went to New England and was struggling his first year. Remember what he went? Five games? And then his starting quarterback gets hurt, and Tom Brady steps in, and everything changes. Is that a curse? Broken? Lifted? I'm going to uh, tell you where you really you screwed me up, though, where you got me. is like... Art Modell did something bad, but somehow Cleveland's paying the price for it. Yeah, right, right. right. <laughs> but that's karma, huh? What Cleveland do to get that bad karma? Right.